Hey everyone, welcome back. This is my cane build, my derby cane. You can see I'm using multicam. This is one of my first videos where I started doing some multicam. And uh, I'm using this little stare at punch. I love this little punch. It's really, really cool for how old it is. It's, uh, it's a cool little vintage tool I got. And uh, I'm about to use the lathe, the craftsman lathe that I inherited from a coworker of mine, a good buddy. His dad used to make canes on this lathe, so I was really, really happy to get to try this project out. I had originally inherited it with some craftsman tooling that you'll see me using in a little bit too. Um, what you're seeing me do here is I'm putting guidelines every so often for depth. Uh, I'm using the calipers. I have them probably set to an inch and a quarter right now and I just keep putting little marks in and then I make sure that I blend the marks all together so the whole thing is now about an inch and a quarter you can see me wearing my bandana I'm not typically very good at putting safety gear on but I am probably like 80% good at it so most of the time I try to remember to grab something and put it over myself um, Everybody should always try to remember that, especially when you're dealing with the harsh materials. And I like to try to set up an aperture light every once in a while. That's my little light there. And there's a little cutscene. I like to get pretty crafty with my edits. You can see I'm starting to do some different camera movements and stuff. And there's a little bit of shaking in the action cameras, but there's nothing I can do about that. That's just how the stabilization acted and... It might even be because it was on the table. That is something in the future for me to build, is I'd like to build some different camera mounts that come off the walls instead of sitting on the tables. So maybe the next video, that might be one of my goals, is just to do some lighter, small camera rigs. What you've seen me do so far is I've set up two dowel ends. So that way I could Roman joint the cane together and now I am doing little ridges for where I'm going to put some brass tubing on. I got some brass tubing from Online Metals that I have plans to put on and polish it up. It worked out really good actually. Um, you'll see it here in a little bit. And This is Sino Acrylate Glue. It's a medium thick star bond. I cannot recommend this stuff enough. It dries jet black. Amazing. This will save you in a pinch if you have a knot. It looks really, really good when you're done too. Um, also, I like to use walrus tongue oil. I also like to pre-soak it. So this is me just doing a little pre-soaking before I come back to it. Tongue oil really is a beautiful finish. Especially if you're not gonna poly, it's just nice on its own. Uh, so this is the Carter fence and Carter guide blocks. They're amazing. You can stack them together to get any kind of dimension you want. I think I went with one inch for the brass tubing. And, uh, you can see I'm just throwing in a bunch of cutscenes. I originally tied this video to music. Um, I'll tag it down in the... Uh, the description below I made a music version if you want to check it out um, it's a full movie it's 58 minutes long I'd love it if you check it out you can see there I had a little bit of a tear out I ended up repairing it off camera with some uh, JB weld putty it's a two-part epoxy putty it's amazing and uh, if you've seen back there too I cut three pieces of brass tubing the third piece was for cutting so I take this little crescent wrench tool here that I have and I just push it on and it cuts most of the groove that I need to fit the brass tubing on. And uh, I just repeat it over here. It worked out really, really good. Uh, maybe that's a new technique. You know, I just had to be real careful and especially on the last one, the last little stretch, I made sure I dialed it in with the tooling. I like to use these little skewers with the epoxy to get like a little rolling edge 
That way I can blend the epoxy really nicely. I learned that from uh, Jimmy's tips videos. If you ever get a chance, check out Jimmy Duress's tips and tricks. But the epoxy works great. Holds it on really nicely. I left the inside a little rough. And here you can see I'm wearing my mask. Because brass dust is not okay to breathe in. So the 3M masks do a pretty good job at stopping particulates from getting into your lungs. And uh, I was trying to do a little bit more handheld footage too. I don't do enough of that. So the GoPro and the DJI are really, really good for that. So it was nice to kind of carry those around with me as I was moving around. And uh, this is a Wen 4 jaw chuck. This is the piece of Badook coming into play. I cut it down from a square edge. The Wen 4 jaw chuck is pretty amazing. It does a pretty good job of grabbing. There's also a smaller inside center. If I had like a one inch or less rod, it would fit in that. You can even go up a little bit higher than that. You can see the tooling is working really good. I love these little gouges. They work great for making something round right away. Just taking a shower in the red. This stuff was so red. It was it was like bleach or not even bleaching. It was dyeing my skin very very red. Um, I remember my hands being red for a couple days after doing this. And here you can see me making the mistake of not wearing the bandana. Like I said, about 80% of the time, I mostly try to grab it. Um, this is my favorite pencil. So, uh, Jimmy's pencil, such a great quote on it. I'm marking out guidelines for where I'm going to leave material because I need to be able to put my roller bearings on. It also gave me guidelines to where I wanted to get down to. So I just slowly work my way down. And this is going to get me to my one inch mark. And through the power of the editing and the odd stabilization of the GoPro. I don't know why it does this. But when you start moving around, sometimes the stabilization wants to follow you. Um, but here I am at one inch with my little guide for my roller bearings. And you can see I left a little one on the end too. You'll see why that I did that here in a minute. So here the roller bearings come into play. Now I'm able to put the drill in the tailstock and I'm able to drill the dowel insert and for when I'm gonna join these together. So you got a little depth gauge. This was a three quarter inch drill the ice pick blow it out and then this little dowel that I have was just so I could turn it because I knew once I drilled that end out I would no longer have my center point to work with and here I cut it down and I leave it proud just by a little bit you'll see why you know here in a second when I join them together I need a place to put the bearings still so I leave it proud by just a tiny tiny bit Here you can see me dialing in with my carbide bit and then I bring in the skew. The skew will give you a nice clean edge if you're cutting a flat bottom on end grain. That's the wonderful thing about the skew. If you remember I still had the other end where I left the little piece so I have to come in and make sure that I don't get tear out like I did last time. I have to take little bites just bring it little bit closer that way I can take the whole thing off and go glue it together now I use uh, tight bond dark I love this glue works out when you're working with dark woods really well came out really really good and I just clamped it all to a level and everything worked out really good I actually took it to the table saw and I sat it in the the uh, slot and I set up a little dial indicator to make sure that as I rotated, I had the least amount of deflection. So that's why you saw me put it together with the level too. But 
I made sure everything would go together and there would be no deflection. I did the same thing when I put the handle onto it too. Stepping through the grits of the sandpaper, I get it to 3000 and remove the bearing block. And here I do the same thing, repeat the same process to get the whole thing down to 3000 grit. And then out comes the polish. Uh, a polish I like to use is turtle wax. Turtle wax compound is a lot like jeweler's rouge. It's red. It's got a nice high grit. And it works great for things like brass. And sometimes polyurethane, you have to be careful how much you get on the wood. As you can see, I started on the brass and didn't add any to the wood and slowly worked my way over. And uh, I even take the brass over to the polishing wheel. Step through a couple grits with it. And it comes out near finish. But here's a beauty shot of it. Came out great. Um, this is the cane handle. Also Paduke. I have to pre-drill the dowel insert end. Because I know once I lose my square edge, I can no longer get it. A little bit of bandsaw work. I did two shots of this, but I lost the other shot. So, this shot was pretty good. So, I was able to just keep this one. And, uh, I like to use the pencil, just like Jimmy. Great for uh, pushing. Make sure your fingers don't get too close. And I got a really cool template out of that. The Harbor Freight one inch belt sander. Everybody has one of these. This thing is great. It does a good job of getting in tight places. I probably will never not have this thing around. Maybe one day I'll improve to a more industrial one, but I'm always going to keep a one inch belt sander around for these little occasions. And Switch to the router, of course. I'm trying to remove as much material as I can. I like to take the human out of the equation, is what I say. As much stuff as I can take out before I start actually physically handheld removing material. The machine is always going to do a better job if it can get you there. So here you can see I'm handhelding it. And I'm being ever so gentle and I'm leaving everything proud that way when I go in I can hand file to the line we were talking about sculpting the other day and how you go about it this is how I go about it I just slowly bring myself to that line I don't try to just power sand to the line because I'm never going to succeed start the sandpaper and everything and everything blends really nicely when you do this if you step through your grits and you're really close like that i think no matter what you're gonna end up with a pretty clean product like you see right here i uh, i like to hit everything with the polisher real quick it just kind of brings it to life and what I'm doing here, I don't recommend doing. I'm pretty aware of what my tools can do when I'm using them. But I had a towel there. You want to be very careful if you're going to do it. I use the towel to keep the surface of my cane in good order. I didn't want to have to go through re-sanding everything. So, but if you're going to do that, make sure you're really, really comfortable with the tool. I knew that the towel was not going to get caught in the blade. And uh, that's a cool little trick. You can use the template to clamp. I uh, used it there, and it's also a nice little art piece to set to the side. A little memory of me, you know, making the piece itself. Uh, here you can see the tongue oil. The tongue oil is really making the colors pop. Looks really, really good. There's a couple different camera angles. Really, really looks good. I, I couldn't be more happier with this cane. And uh, I'm doing wipe on poly, but I'm brushing on the edges. And then I come in with a towel and wipe everything as normal. And uh, I'm able to rotate it on those little holders that I made. 
quickly on the bandsaw. This is a cool little foot that I found. It was really unique. It's got a little, it's got like an older gentleman with a cane and like a smaller gentleman with a cane on it. And they're standing next to each other. And that's after many, many hours of finishing that I did off camera. Really, really came out really good. Um, I didn't want to bore you guys with the sanding process bringing poly to that level but it's basically add 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 sand add 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 polish and uh, you end up with a very very beautiful piece like I said I couldn't be more happier this is one of the coolest things I made um, possibly a future investment we'll see um, hope I get to gift it to someone someday but if not, it'll be there waiting for me. And as usual, I always like to end every video with the walkout. It's one of my uh, closing signatures, I guess. All right. Thank you, guys. Love and respect. Appreciate it.